Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome. I'm here with Jillian Shute from Irwin and Tom Silva, who you all know. And we are here to celebrate National Tradesperson Day. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jillian, thank for, you for having me. joining us from Charlotte. Yes, thank you for having me. And Tommy, uh, you didn't really come that far. <laughs> no, I didn't come that far. I appreciate you being here. But I want to be here. All right, well, that's good to hear. Um, so we're going to hear more from Jillian and Tommy in a minute. But first, uh, Erwin put together a video to explain a little bit more about National Tradesperson Day. We're going to watch that now. Character. Skill. Community. Quality the tradesperson builds a reputation on. In 2011, Irwin established National Tradesperson Day to show our respect for the profession and to encourage all who rely on the knowledge and skill of trade specialists to do the same. To every tradesperson, from veteran pros to apprentices learning the ropes, thanks for a job well done today and every day. Irwin, trade strong. So a great tribute uh, to show respect for men and women working in the trades. Jillian, can you tell us about the history of National Tradesperson Day? Yeah, Chris, I'm so excited to be here. National Tradesperson Day was founded by Irwin as a national holiday in 2011 to say thank you and celebrate the men and women who built this country and keep it running. Um, we established the holiday to really bring awareness to the critical role people in the skilled trades um, deliver. That's great. Um, and also to encourage future people to go into the trades. And really the third uh, Friday of every September, we want people to say thank you across the nation to tradespeople. It's a great honor to be involved in this and it's such a great tribute. Um, I, you're also including this guy in your in your tribute, <laughs> I assume. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be part of it, believe me. It's a big deal. Yeah, and Tommy, so um, you've been in the trades for a long time. You've inspired a lot of people <laughs> and uh, in your career. What has inspired you to, to join the trades and to stay with it? You know, all my life I've just had a desire to work with my hands. Uh, I grew up a little kid with my dad and worked in, a, in our house with 1700s and on weekends and nights when he was working on the house, I wanted to work with him. I was probably in his way more than not, but uh, still today I just love it and what inspires me also is just w seeing other people in the trades working. I love to watch what they're doing and, and learn from that too. That's, that's big. Yeah, learning and growing is a huge aspect of Absolutely. the, of the you can't career. Absolutely. You can't stay in that same groove. You've got right. to expand. Yeah. And there's lots of opportunity here yeah. now and Absolutely. in the future. Jillian, I'm sure you have a tradesperson you'd like to give a shout out to and, and someone who's inspired you. Do you right. want to talk about that? Yes. There's just not one in my life. Uh, my own maternal grandfather was auto mechanic, used to build and oh, wow. rebuild cars. Uh, Mr. Detmer, our plumber growing up, he was extremely at, uh, active in our church and our community um, and he also had a running joke with my mom that we always had a plumbing issue when his kids needed new shoes <laughs> <laughs> and then finally um, my babysitter's husband growing up he had his own TV and um, radio repair company but he loved this old house and Tommy I used to watch you when I was this big <laughs> he used to run home from work to have lunch and we would all watch this old house together and it inspired him to completely gut and redo their own home oh that's great uh, to hear I mean we've, I think we've helped a lot of people you have Absolutely. Yeah. That is very cool. That's really cool. Tommy, you, what, uh, who's inspired you? Like, is there a tradesperson that's inspired you? Oh, gosh, there's been so many uh, over the years. I mean, a lot of the people that have inspired me were people that my father had working for him, some of the guys and stuff like that. I mean, I used to watch a plasterer or a, a bricklayer or whatever, and it was like, yeah, I really want to do that. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking when I was little. And... Uh, I, I really cherish all of the jobs, whether it's an auto mechanic, whether it's a welder. Uh, I always wanted to be part of that, so I, I always try to get my hands into it and, and get them dirty because it, it's it's gratifying, mm -hmm. you know. Well, speaking of uh, getting your hands involved, I'm sure our our viewers and thank you again for joining us. Our viewers would like to see. You got any tips? You got any? We got hey, some tools you, in front of us. You, you got gonna, anything? You're gonna you put me on the spot? Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, why, yeah, you why know, not? You razz me all the time. I'm, I'm going to get back to you too. 
But these little things right here, I can say, are am amazing. I mean, I've, I've showed different tips on how to pull screws and nails. And these things, uh, lots of times, these little ones are fantastic because you can carry them with you. But if you have a screw or a nail that's hard to get, and these will do it, uh, you can pull it out. There's so, so many things. I mean, it, 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 I can't even think yeah. of a I could think of a hundred things, but I don't want to bore you. Uh, but all right, let's take Never a report, let's, let's take a clamp like this. Okay. All right. These are great. I use these a lot when I'm doing my stuff for my turnings and stuff. I got to build them up, glue them. A couple of pencils. All right. So let's say I want to, let's say I want to build a bowl and I want to know the diameter of that bowl or I want to figure it out. I take two pencils, one with the eraser down, one with the uh, pencil lead down, and I put it where I, the center is and I adjust it to where I think I might want to go. I just made myself a compass. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. That and I can awesome. make it any size I want. <laughs> I've seen you do that a, a bunch of times with tape measures and oh, yeah. all yeah. that. And now, you can do it with a know, wrench and all kinds of things. You can do it with a wrench. Now you can do it with a, with a clamp. I suppose I should try it with a vice grip. You should try it with a grip. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. Um, I, we, you alluded, Jillian, to uh, the skilled trades gap a little bit, and um, we have some initiative here at this old house with Generation Next. Mm. Tommy, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, Generation Next is, is definitely in need of, there's no question about it. It's getting the young people back into the trades because they're not coming into the trades. And uh, it's hard to find people to come to work. And so what we've done is we've hired young people during the summer months, usually on school break or whatever, and we've uh, put them through the paces. I mean, I don't make it easy, but you, you're <laughs> not going to learn something if it's easy. Uh, but you have fun with it also. And if you have fun with it, you can, you can learn. And I, mean, I think I'll give you a quick example of a couple of summers ago, I had a young kid that his mother wanted him to work hard for the summer. Mm -hmm. And so do you want to know if he could work with us? And I said, yeah, we'll put him to work. And so he was basically doing labor work, but every now and then I'd put a tool in his hand and I'd tell him what to do and how to do it and so on down the line. But I also made him do the grunt work, the stuff that I did when I was a kid. I didn't, I just, when someone says, well, you know, you can't do that because of this. I said, well, you can't tell me that I can't be done because I know every part of the job, whether it's digging a hole or putting a roof on. So I know how to do it. And uh, I had fun with him, worked hard, and I, I really didn't think that he was really happy about the summer, but it was nice when I said, he said, I got to go because we're leaving back to school. He says, do you think I can come back next year? Awesome. And so that That's was, awesome. uh, to me, that was a big deal. Did you hire him back? Uh, I haven't heard yet. He hasn't, he hasn't come back yet. <laughs> All, right. All right. But I would. Yeah. 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 Very, very nice. Um, before we keep going, I just want to mention, uh, if you have any questions, we're going to be getting some questions towards the end. Um, so please. Uh, tee those up in the comments section, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, and uh, Jillian and Tommy will both be answering those uh, in a little bit. Um, as far as a, a reward, like the reward of working in the in the trades, um, Tommy, what's what's your perspective on that? Like, what, what would you say to people who who are thinking about it as an option? I mean, I didn't have to think about it. I just, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. But as I, as I was growing up and I had kids and drive around with a town, for example, that we lived in, I could, I could remember talking to my daughter or my son. They were this little, this little, you know, oh, I built that place and I did the renovation here. Oh, we put a foundation in that or whatever. But there's something about working with your hands no matter what trade it is, whether it's an automobile and so on down. It's basically, uh, it's gratification. Uh, it's the sense of accomplishment mm. and you don't get that from a lot of different jobs uh, and it's why I have the passion of doing what I do you know I, I wouldn't want to do and I never wanted to do anything else but work with these two little babies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as far as as making a living doing it it's mm. sometimes the trades get a bad rap well, as you, you if, if you take pride in what you're doing you do the job right you make the homeowner happy and if there's a problem and you fix it, you will be very, very successful. Very good, very good. All So keep that in mind, you guys, if you're thinking about a career in the trades. Um, Jillian, this is the 10th anniversary? Yes, the 10th anniversary. For National Trades Person Day. What is Irwin doing differently this year? Well, what we're doing differently is obviously we're partnering this old house and we're extremely happy to celebrate and say thank you to the tradesmen and tradeswomen in this nation with this old house. We are also 
Oh boy. Oh boy. And between, with our partnership with This Old House and Generation Next, we're going to be donating $25,000 to the Home Builders Institute that is Generation Next uh, Partner Foundation for educating and influencing the next generation of tradespeople. That's awesome. That is, that is great. We thank you on behalf of This Old House and also our friends at HBI have a message of thanks as well. I want to thank Irwin Tools uh, for their continued support and their, uh, their generous donation. And also uh, this old house as their continued support for our programs. Um, we're proud to have them as sponsors and supporters of HBI and we'll continue to do good work for them. So again, thank you. That is, it's such a great thing. Um, what can uh, people do to get involved? Right. right now. So viewers at home can make a donation uh, to one of Gener ne Generation Next uh, partner foundation like the Home Builders Institute or a nonprofit of their choice. I'm also very excited to announce that Stanley Black & Decker, Irwin's parent company, just announced our Global Impact Challenge. Um, our Global Impact Challenge will support uh, nonprofits that are focused on upskilling, reskilling, and growing the trades. Wow. Very cool. Over the next five years, Stanley Black & Decker is going to um, contribute $25 million in grants. Wow. wow. That is yes. fantastic. Yes. That's awesome. To nonprofit organizations focused on closing the skills gap. Great. That's fantastic. We definitely need it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the month of October, the call for entries for the Global Impact Challenge is open. So, go online and if you or a nonprofit organization you know of is inspired by the trades and wants to help the trades and is involved in helping the trades, please go online and enter. Awesome. All right. I think we may be posting some links uh, below uh, in the comments section, but uh, imagine Irwin.com. Yes, Irwin.com, StanleyBlackAndDecker.com. Yeah. And we'll have on thisoldhouse.com, we'll have that information as well. That is really very cool. That's, that's exciting. That's an exciting initiative. Um, that's that's. We That's need to awesome. get we need to get people dollars. back in the trades. There's yeah. no question about absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you again for the generous donation and for creating that initiative. Uh, and Tommy, do you guys have? Uh, you want to answer some questions? Sure. From, let's see what let's see what people are, what our viewers are 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 saying here. Um, Wayne from Hawaii, Aloha. Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this question comes in from James B., who's watching on YouTube. How do you turn a house into a wheelchair accessible house? Uh, you want to, uh, first of all, you got to figure out the steps situation. If you needed a ramp, you, it's always good if you have a, ba a patio out back. Sometimes you can raise the grade of the patio to get it in. You want to make sure that your door widths are wide enough. You don't want to have thresholds going in and out of rooms and even the exterior threshold should be ramped also. Uh, three foot openings, you want to make sure that you have plenty of swing for the wheelchair in the kitchen, mm -hmm. islands and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of different things. You want to make sure you have safety guards, safety railings uh, on uh, appliances. You know, you want to spill anything on it uh, like that and then bathrooms and stuff like that mm -hmm. is key. Yeah, there's a lot to think about. Making yes, there's a, a, there's a, a whole guideline of rules. Yeah, there's a lot. Follow. There's um, there's a, there's a lot going on there. So yep. James, hopefully hopefully that helps. Thank you for joining us, and uh, thank you for your question. Uh, we have Steve M is joining us from Connecticut. Hey, Steve, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Um, we have another question here from YouTube. Any projects in Charleston in the near future? Uh, we love the local Building Arts College. The Building Arts College is a great organization. Um, you guys worked a little bit with them on yeah. the Charleston Project. Fantastic, yeah. I was very impressed. I didn't even know it was there. I'm surprised when we did the Charleston Project, we visited it and it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, some of the people down there are real craftsmen. I mean, amazing work. Yeah. And uh, they just go there, to, some of them go there to start from scratch and learn, and some of them just go there to better themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's impressive to see it. We did a little scene with making an iron gate and to see the work that goes into it and the, and the teaching of making that gate uh, was pretty impressive. That was awesome. That was a beautiful yeah. gate. And yeah. watching you guys hang that gate was 
That was yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, it was it was heavy. Check that out. Yeah, it was it was, it was heavy. Uh, to answer your first question, uh, are, do we have any projects scheduled right now for the near future? Uh, not that we're aware, but um, if you're watching and you have projects in in Charleston, please uh, go online and our website thisoldhouse.com, and you can submit a project there. Um, I'm sure we wouldn't mind going back to Charleston. Charleston was, was in, it was <laughs> a nice city. city. It was a great town. Yeah. yeah. Um, MJ from YouTube. Hey, Tommy, I'm building a, a lean-to shed. Can a two by six be spanned 20 feet? That's a technical question. A 20 foot <laughs> I know span that you have two by six. To. Um, you could do it, well, technically no. If it's going to be a floor joist, is I, I guess what I'm thinking of. It's 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 too short. Um, take the span that you want to span, divide it by, but divide it in half, and add two. So let's see, 16 foot, 10 foot span, divide it in half is five, and add two is seven. So a two by eight is minimum, is what you need. There and you, you also need solid blocking in between to share the load from one to the other. There you go. That's all I got. Two by six is going <laughs> to sag pretty bad on a 20 yeah, foot Yeah, but it's span. good if you like trampolines. <laughs> um, MJ, thanks for writing in. Hopefully that helps. Uh, we've got another question here from YouTube. Brother Dan, how do you make a garage door quieter? I live right upstairs from the garage door, and it's really quite loud. Well, you want the... Uh, smart answer. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the door itself is very quiet. It's the hardware that's noisy. <laughs> so you got to change the rollers. You got to change the opener. Usually, you got to put a belt-driven opener in it. The soft close is always good, and the nylon wheels, as opposed to steel wheels, make a big difference. Nylon wheels to steel wheels. Nice. Yeah. That's that's nice. See? Yeah. <laughs> or you could take your roller blades and you cut the wheels off and make the garage door open. Is that going to work? No. That sounds like something you would try, though. That, I could totally see that. Yeah. I'm going to have to check but that's it out. The idea of a, that's the idea of the wheel. You think of steel on steel running. All right. you hear is the grinding of that going through. Well, you change the connection, nylon or uh, there's another material that they use. And basically, it, it goes through the, on the, tr the metal, and it doesn't make that noise. I love it. You always got something. Um, Facebook. John W., thanks for joining us, John. Would it be better to start teaching the trades at high school level and again at college, too? No. It would be better to start them younger. Junior high. Get them started Junior. younger. They, they, I, I love dealing with working with little kids. The sooner you get them working with their hands to see what they can accomplish and pat them on the back when they do something right and not don't pat them on the back when they do something wrong. You're going to learn from your mistakes. If you don't make a mistake, you're not going to learn. That's right. That's so true. But the earlier you can get them introduced to it, and you have teachers that want to want to teach these kids how to work with their hands and, and figure things out with their brain, they'll be successful. Okay. Jillian, you have any thoughts on that? On I, I completely agree. Um, we spent a lot of time working around our house. Um, during with COVID yeah. in 2020, and my son, who was eight at the time, built a lot of built um, bases. We had to put in a new basketball uh, hoop, and he built a base for my husband. He yeah. measured everything as an eight-year-old, cut the wood himself, installed the base, took a picture of it, and used right. all his uh, Irwin tools to do it. Oh, that, I, and I, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, well, that's smart that he did. But it's it's good of you, and a lot of parents don't have the patience to do this. But let your son or daughter. Do those projects, mm -hmm. and if they're doing something wrong, and I, and lots of times I'll see a little kid or somebody doing something wrong, I'll let them continue on doing it wrong until they start to put it together. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so now let's go back to see what you did, and why you did it, and then you explain to them why they did it that way, uh, how they could have corrected it. They realize right away, and they won't make that mistake again. No, they won't. They they learned and and remember from your mistake. That's great. Except you, you make a lot. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew, I knew I wasn't going to get out of that unscathed. Um, let's see here. So another question for Jillian from Brooke on Facebook. Okay. Jillian, what is your favorite Irwin tool? Oh, you know, my favorite Irwin tool is uh, the quick grip clamp. 
Uh, that was actually the first, one of my first product management jobs when I came to Irwin as a product manager. And I just think they're most versatile. Uh, one of the funny stories, I use those these on everything. Uh, my son, as I talked about before, he can be kind of a, a troublemaker at times. And he knocked uh, the, fl the front of our uh, face of our um, steps going into our house. So I got some glue, glued it down, put my quick grips on it, set it overnight. Popped it off, you would not know the difference That's the next awesome. day. So they are very handy. They are definitely handy. I mean, I use them a lot myself. I use them for little pro. I like the fact that you have little ones too. Yep. Because I do a lot of turning and stuff like that, and I need to glue little pieces together. Now, I don't put it on the lathe so it won't spin. Oh, so don't ask mm -hmm. me that stupid question. <laughs> These are for gluing the pieces together so you can put them on the lathe. Okay, all right. See what I have right. to put up with? All right. That's great. Well, um, thank you for clarifying that because I was going to I was going to worry a little bit, and uh, that sounds like a great fix for the for the riser. The trend. Um, thank you, Brooke, for for writing in and for joining us. Um, we let's see, we have we have some time for a few more. So please uh, share share your questions if you're watching. Um, Matthew S from Facebook, what is the best way for young people to get into general contracting? So general contracting versus, uh, I, I assume uh, Matthew means uh, overseeing all the subs, not, not specialized, specialized in yeah, one thing. Yeah. Well, first of all, my, my opinion would be go and work on each trades, first of all. Work on, I, like, I think architects should do this also. Mm -hmm. you, if you're going to design a house, if you're going to work on a house, you should know a little bit about all of the trades to understand whatever element you do. So in other words, if you're a finished guy, you should be a framer guy first. But if you're a finished guy, then a framer, a framer that's a, a good framer knows finished work. So what I'm getting at is in corner blocks, if you know if the baseboard's gonna be this high and your, your wall is gonna be like this and it's gonna be extra thick, you all of a sudden you say, well, I gotta put an extra block in the framing work so that they'll have nailing for that. Or maybe the, in the design work, there's going to be curtains on the wall. Maybe you're going to need future blocking for that. Bathrooms, where are you going to put the hangers for the toilet paper hanger or the safety bars? You want to make sure you have plenty of support behind that. So just understanding what one other person would need by the time when the walls are closed up, you have to be able to get to it. Yeah, and you, you guys just shot a scene about that with uh, in Concord about yeah. the framing and, and having yeah. to know everything that was coming. How, how important it is. Yeah. 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 And yeah. framing, you know, people say, oh, rough framing. Rough framing isn't really a good framing, rough framing job isn't, isn't framing, isn't rough. It's not sanded, but the joints should be tight mm -hmm. and strong. Nails should be the correct size. Plywood should be cut to fit right. All of those things to make the, the structure stiff, strong, and dependable. All right. Well, we just gave you a little tease to an upcoming episode in our Concord project. <laughs> and thankfully, Tommy didn't give away too much of it. But um, that's, all, that's all good stuff. It's, it's so true. And, and having that general knowledge is, is, yeah. is huge. Um, uh, Mike from Facebook is asking... Uh, more specifics about for more specifics about the skilled trades gap. Jillian, yeah. do you have some some thoughts on that? Yeah, there's a major need for more skilled workers in the United States. Um, according to Deloitte and the Manufacturing Institute, there are going to be 4.6 million more jobs needed in the skilled trades between now and 2030. And right now, because of the skills gap, probably 2.4 million of them are going to remain open. Mm. Um, so we need to keep a national dialogue on it. Mm. And it's definitely um, a need for those. We need more skilled workers. Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think the average age in the, in the trades today, <clears throat> excuse me, are 55 years old. So they're going to be retiring. And we've got to get those spaces filled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, looks like HBI is, is, is joining us on YouTube, watching along the HBI Building Careers, and they have a question specifically uh, uh, to Jillian about career opportunities for women in the trades. Oh, there's more career opportunities for women in the trades than ever before, um, from plumbers to electricians, general contractors, and we have um, a lot of social impact people that we worked with now that are tradeswomen, so, and especially mechanics and so forth. So women have every opportunity in the trades that men do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I see more women coming into it, and it's great. They're hard workers, that's for sure, and they know the stuff, and they're very talented. Yeah. 
And you're um, working with, uh, you're apprenticing uh, a woman in your own shop, oh. your, your daughter. <laughs> My daughter, Kate, yeah. Well, she started, she wants to learn how to turn, so I've been teaching her how to turn on a lathe, and she's made some pretty uh, amazing things. So she's it's been, fun, it's fun stuff. Yeah, she's been, she's been doing a great job. Um, shout out to Kate for doing an awesome job on the lathe. I know you have a great teacher. Let me jump in on one thing here. I mean, think about these kids that, not, all, not all, all these kids want to go to college, although they say they have to go to college. But if they go to a trade school and they, they go to that trade school and they learn a trade, usually in the process they have to go out and apprentice with someone. So they've gone to trade school. They, they haven't paid as much as they would have if they've gone to a different college. But now they're apprenticing and they're learning during the apprentice but being paid for it. Mm -hmm. So think of the money that they've made during the teaching process a learning process that if you're in college, you, I know I know, my son's friends or my daughter's friends when they were younger, they got out of college and so what are you gonna do? Well, I know I have to go back to her for another couple of years because now I know what I wanna do. So they spent two years trying to find out what they're gonna do. And going into the trades, you know, you may go into the trades thinking you wanna be a carpenter at the end, you come out and you wanna be a plumber. Uh, but you've learned that you didn't wanna do this, you found out you love doing this. Mm -hmm. You develop a passion for different things. But trade schools are, are good, and we need trade schools to get our kids back into the business. There you go. Good stuff. That's absolutely. Um, we have time for a couple more questions. You guys good with a couple more questions? I we keeping you? Yeah. <laughs> you got some place to be? Don't you worry about me, Sonny. I'm, I'm rushing. I'm, I'm going to get to lunch, get to lunch before you, just yeah. so you know. Well, you don't need it. <laughs> Um, we have a couple more questions here, uh, some folks from YouTube. So uh, Wayne J on YouTube is giving a shout out to Erwin Clamps. Uh, I love the Erwin Clamps. So uh, Thank obviously you. We, pre uh, we appreciate that. I love Jillian them too. Appreciate that. Um, uh, we got a question from Pauline on uh, YouTube. I'm building some stringers and a cir my circular saw kerf is off center. Any way to adjust that? I believe the blade is set to fall into the waste material. It's been difficult to cut stringers. So. You're the tool guy. What do you got? <laughs> it sounds like it's a cutting the line versus leaving the line issue right. to me, but I'm it's not. Getting, it's really learning the SAR and figuring out because each SAR may be a little bit different and, and where she's looking to cut that blade. Some, some, I know some cases when I'm cutting with a saw, I may cheat and look at the tip of the blade through a little hole in the saw. Other times you can use the finder at the front and you have to decide on which side of that line or figure out which side of that line that blade is set on. Once you figure that out, then you, you just, in your mind, adjust the saw for that difference. Um, but when you're cutting stringers, stringers have to be dead on. The big deal about, once you figure out where to cut it on the line, the big deal is, you never go past the intersecting line. You want to finish that up with a handsaw because you don't want to overcut to weaken the stringer. There you go. Well, that's, uh, that's all the time we have now for, for questions. But before we go, Jillian, yes. you have any message, uh, any more messages for any men and women uh, in the trades yes. today, working in the trades today? I would say to the men and women in the trades today, the work you do is essential to keeping our homes and businesses running. To the welders, the mechanics, the electricians, plumbers, woodworkers, general contractors, and HVAC technicians alike, thank you. And I encourage all the viewers to thank the tradespeople in their lives too. Awesome. Tommy? I'm going to second that. You said that very well, much better than I could. Uh, but uh, you're dead on in that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hope you have a great National Tradesperson Day. And remember, please go out and thank someone who works in the trades. And, and thank make, you both for joining us. Thank you for having me. Go make something. Go make something. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Silva said it. <laughs>